Number 14. A football quarterback runs 15.0 meters straight down the playing field in 2.5 seconds. He is then hit and pushed 3 meters straight backward in 1.75 seconds. He breaks the tackle and runs straight forward another 12, excuse me, 21 meters in 5.2 seconds. So calculate his average velocity. For A, each of the three intervals, and then B for the entire motion. Okay, so uh, why don't we why don't we draw a picture first? All right. So here's the quarterback starts running. It says straight down the field. Actually, let me make it a little longer. So starts running straight down the field, and it appears that it uh, he tr first travels in the first part fifteen point zero meters. And it takes him 2.50 seconds, right? So this looks like it's his displacement value. Or I'll call it his distance, right? And then this is the time it took him. Okay. Then in the second part, he's pushed three meters straight backwards now. Okay, so now we're starting at this particular point. And he's pushed straight backwards uh, about three meters. Okay, so that's probably good about there. Um, so it says three meters backwards, so three meters. And let me actually include the decimals. So the distance here is going to be 3.00 uh, meters. And then the time it took to travel back this distance was 1.75 seconds. Then he breaks the tackle. And now he runs straight forward for another 21 uh, meters. Okay, so now we're going to start. Uh, from this point, okay, and we're going to move forward now, right? So let's 21 meters. Okay, great. So now it says that the distance he travels here is going to be 21.0 meters, and the time it takes him to do this is going to be 5.20 seconds. Okay, so calculate the average velocity for each of these intervals. Okay, so let's do the interval in yellow. Okay, so I'll call that part one. So velocity is equal to the displacement, right? The change in displacement divided by the change in time. So since the object or since the quarterback is moving to the right, I know that the displacement is positive. So I'll just make a note of that when I plug it in. Right, so he moved 15 Point zero meters to the right. So that's a positive value. Remember, to the right is always positive, and to the left is always negative. Okay, also up. And let me make it a little cleaner. Remember that I'll do it up here. Up is always positive, and down is always negative. Okay, so divided by then time, right? That's so the time it took him to go 15 meters was 2.50 seconds. Great, so now the average velocity will simply just be uh, the division of this. So take 15 and divide it by 2.5, and it works out to be 6, right? And keeping in significant figures should be 3, so 6.00 meters per second. So that's the answer to uh, part 1. Then part 2, now he gets pushed back, right? 3 meters, and it uh, took him 1.75 seconds to, to do that. So again, the average velocity is equal to the... Displacement divided by the time. Okay, so now in this problem, though, the object is moving to the left, right? So you can see it here. It's moving to the left. So what that means is that the displacement value will be negative here. So it's negative 3.00 meters divided by 1.75 seconds. So just take that and throw it into the calculator. So 3 divided by 1.75. And remember three significant figures here, so it looks like it comes out to one point, yeah, 1.71 meters per second, negative. Okay, great. And then last but not least, we'll look at the last part. So part number three here. Remember that again, velocity is equal to the displacement divided by the time. So now to find the average velocity, uh, the object is now moving to the right, so it's positive. So the 21.0 meters is a positive value. So we got 21.0 meters positive divided by the time. So 
uh, zero seconds. Okay, so the average velocity would be, uh, plug that into the calculator, 21 divided by 5.2, so 4.04. So it looks like it comes out to 4.04 meters per second. Three sig figs because that's what we're, that's what we're given. Okay, so that all would be for part A. Now let's take a look at part B. So now it wants to know the average velocity for the entire motion. Okay, so remember, in order to figure um, this out, um, let's just first start with the velocity formula. So I'm gonna do part B over here. Okay, now remember, the velocity is equal to the change in displacement divided by the change in time. Now let's just break that down a little more. The change in displacement, right, is really the final displacement value minus the initial displacement value. Okay, all right, divided by time, right, or the change in time. So, where's the start of this problem now? Because it wants to find the average velocity for the entire motion. So what's the start of the entire problem? Well, the start of the entire problem would be here. This is the start. Okay, and what's the displacement value at the start? Well, you didn't move anywhere, right? The quarterback didn't move anywhere. So the displacement initially should be zero. He didn't go anywhere. Okay, it's only after the clock started ticking. Also, the time value here would also be zero because that's when the clock essentially started. Now think about where is the end now of the entire motion. So the end should be here, right? This is now the end. And now what's the displacement at the end of this? Well, how, how do you think about it? It's really the difference between the starting point, so this value, and the ending point, right? So now if we think about it, how do we find that? Well, think about the motion. So first, the, first the quarterback traveled 15 meters this way. Then they got pushed backwards three meters. So if I had to just work with that for right now, I would say that it would be 15 minus three, right? So that would have been 12 meters. Okay, and that's where I would have been at this particular point, at the end of the second part. And then it says from that point, from the second point, he moved another 21 meters forward. So this now moved 21 meters. So what would I have to do to find the point at the end here? Right, you would have to add 21 meters to the uh, 12 meters, right? So this works out to be 33 meters. Now I'm just gonna put the point zero because that would be uh, using the proper significant figures. I didn't include them in the calculation because they're all, they're all zero. But this now represents the uh, total uh, dis uh, displacement. This is now the total displacement, aka the change in displacement. Okay, so that's the value that goes into the numerator here, right? So we would have 33.0, oh, that's a weird three. So 33.0 meters divided then by the total time. So how much time elapsed from the start of the problem to the end of the problem? Well, the total time that elapsed had to be the time from the first part, plus the time from the second part, plus the time from the third part, right? That should make sense. We would add all of them together. So I'll say that the total time here, I'll write it in the upper right-hand corner, the total time should be equal to the time of the first part, plus the time of the second part, plus the time of the third part. Okay, so therefore the total time would be equal to 2.50 plus 1.75 plus 5.20. Great. Plug that into the calculator now. So we get 2.5 plus 1.75 plus 5.2. So it comes out to 9.45. 9.45 seconds. Great. That's the total time. And now that's the value down there. Okay, beautiful. So let's plug that in. So now we have 9.45 seconds. 
And now finally, I can calculate the average velocity over the entire problem. So 33 divided by 9.45 works out to be about 3.49. So 3.49 uh, meters, meters per second. And that would be the answer for part B. Okay. Um, thank you guys so much for tuning in. I hope this helped. And uh, if it did, please remember to subscribe. And I will see you next time.